Well, welcome back in the kitchen studio. This week we're going to be cooking a bacon and lentil dish using celeriac as actually one of the main ingredients. It was while eating left the leftovers from last week's dish that we cooked on the Gastrocast, the braised pork shank and lentils, that I kind of came up with the idea for this soup because lentils and pork are such a fabulous combination and we had the parsnips in the lentils last week and I was thinking uh, while I was eating the leftovers, what would this be like as a soup? And uh, I think we're going to make a very good soup out of those same kinds of ingredients using smoky bacon this week. And uh, we're going to use one of my favorite friends, the celeriac. Now celeriac is otherwise known as celery root and it's actually a knobby portion. This bit here grows in the grounds and the greens grow up here quite a ways. Um, it's, it's in the celery family. A lot of people find it much easier to grow than regular stalk celery. It's much more forgiving and it's also more cold hardy. So even now in the early parts of December, it's not unknown to be able to be harvesting celeriac and you can protect it with burlap and straw to give it uh, to have fresh celeriac much farther into the growing season. It's uh, got a very mild celery flavor, a nice crunch to it, and uh, it's, it's really one of my favorite winter vegetables. It's so versatile, it can be stuffed, be pureed, it can be made into soups, you can eat it raw, cooked, uh, popular is to have it with a beet salad or to shave it into thin julienne strips and make a salad on its own with a, a sort of pickle uh, caper and mayonnaise sauce called remoulade, celeriac remoulade. Very, very popular. And so today though, however, we're going to use it in soup. And uh, it stands out marvelously in a soup. So let's get going. We'll go through the ingredient list first. First on our list of ingredients is going to be one to two leeks, your preference. I've got one really large leek and two smaller, what would be might be classified as baby leeks here, and those uh, will equal about two medium leeks. I've picked these fresh from the garden. Next I've got a medium to large onion, and I have about four small parsnips, two medium parsnips would work quite well, and then two heads or knobs of celeriac. I've also got two cups of French green lentils de puits and 8 to 10 ounces of smoky slab bacon that we'll be cutting up. In addition, we'll need two quarts of strong chicken stock. Now to get started with, we're going to cut up our slab bacon. Mine still has the rind on it, coming fresh from our own pigs, so I've got to trim that rind off, leaving that nice layer of fat right under there. And the rind can be saved and with its smoky flavor and fat can be used to flavor a soup some other time down the road. Now we're going to cut this up into small dice that will be part of the flavoring of our soup. Now the reason my bacon doesn't look as pink as some you might find in the markets is because I've cured this myself without the use of nitrates or nitrites, saltpeter and the like. And so it's got a much more natural color to it rather than the artificial colors that those preservatives lead it to. It's good. We'll get this cut into some lardons, some little slivers of bacony goodness. Next we're going to start the stove, get a little glug of olive oil going in there just to lubricate the bacon while we get it cooking. And we're going to go ahead and add the bacon pieces to the cold pan. And start them sauteing. Meanwhile, while the bacon sauteing, Let's go ahead and prepare our celeriac. <clears throat> really quite easy. Uh, a normal vegetable peeler won't peel a celeriac. You have to use a knife. It's just too uneven 
and especially at this bottom section there can be quite a lot of sand trapped in there and uh, a lot of uh, just odd contours to try and get a vegetable peeler over. So the best thing is a knife and I usually like to cut the top off and then uh, get most of this weird bottom kind of gnarly bit and then just start working my way to peeling it with the knife set it down on its base and just come around it top to bottom taking thin slivers off you can smell how wonderfully fragrant celery like it is phenomenal Depending on how well it's been washed, there can be more or less amounts of soil trapped in this bottom section. Once the bacon is done browning, for the most part, you'll want to use a slotted spoon to remove it from the pan, leaving behind some of the cooking fats for the browning of our vegetables. Depending on how much fat has rendered, from the pan, you might want to pour a bit of it off. Now you cut up celeriac much as you would a potato or any other hard root vegetable. I like to slice mine into thinnish slices and then stack a few of the slices together, cut them into batons and then turn those cross and cut them as efficiently as possible into dice. Here we're looking for medium dice. You mustn't leave celeriac peeled for any length of time because it will start to turn brown but if it's a question of preparing it earlier than needed you can always put it in some acidulated water. Now once we've cut up our celeriac, we also want to cut up our parsnips and our leeks as well. The parsnips are relatively simple. You can treat them the same way as a carrot. If you've never used them before, just peel them. They are sometimes known as the white carrot, as a matter of fact. Peel them, top and tail them, and cut them into a medium dice. With the leeks, you want to make sure to cut off the root end, trim off any of the green bits. Then to make sure that there's no sand caught in the leaves inside the plant, I like to cut the leek in half or quarters lengthwise and then look and uh, see whether there's any soil or sand there and then give them a rinse in the sink. And then the leak can get diced. Now with the bacon removed from the pan, but the pan back on the heat, we're going to go ahead and add our aromatics, our onions and parsnips. And our leeks 
and celeriac or celery root. Gives that a stir all in. Help it absorb some of that bacon and color, that browning that occurred on the bottom of the pan. Cut a round of parchment using a pan lid as a template. Just push that right down onto the surface of the vegetables and then cover with a pan lid. Now I've got my aromatics in the pan. I've put on the parchment paper cap as it were. There's a proper term for it which I can't remember. And I put the lid on, I've turned the heat down to low and that's just going to sweat the vegetables there for five, five to eight minutes. We really don't want to cook them all away we want to give them uh, an intensification of flavor, get them started to cooking. Now if I really wanted to speed this soup up, what I would do would start the stock, or if I had fresh stock on the go, uh, I would have hot stock at the ready to put in with those hot vegetables. That would just decrease the amount of time for the soup overall. But as it is, I've got cool refrigerator temperature stock to add that into the vegetables. Won't make any difference at this point, the soup will take that much longer to make and should just be fine. We're gonna let the vegetables sweat and come back to them. Well, about 10 or 15 minutes have elapsed and the vegetables have been sweating away nicely. Meanwhile, I've taken my bowl of lentils and I've put some water in them and just given them a rinse and let them soak. Lentils were one of the great legumes that don't need soaking like a bean does, a dried bean. Well, I just like to put a little water on them, rinse off any dust, and just see if there's anything that's really not a lentil that floats to the surface. These look pretty good. So I'm going to strain these and get ready for the next step when we'll be adding our stock to our sweated vegetables. Vegetables are looking nicely sweated. I'm going to go ahead and add my two liters of chicken stock. Get everything stirred in there nicely. I'm going to clamp the lid back on and turn the heat up to high and bring that stock up to a simmer. Okay, the stock has come up to a simmer. It's time to add our drained lentils in and let these cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. The lentils have simmered for about 35 minutes and they're just firm to the touch. And I've used a slotted spoon and I've taken out about two cups of the solids, the vegetables, the celeriac, the parsnip, some of the lentils and whatnot. And I want to puree them to add a little bit of thickness to the soup, a little bit of uh, texture. So we're going to blitz this. You can either do it with a wand mixer or a blender with a little bit of the cooking liquid mixed in just to help the vegetables break down. Go ahead and add the lentil and vegetable puree back into the soup. Give the whole thing a stir in. You'll want to taste and adjust everything for seasoning. Needs a little bit more pepper, but I wouldn't add any more salt because of the bacon is already salty enough. 
Now there's two things you can do at this moment. You can serve the soup as it is and add the bacon to each bowl as a garnish, or you can stir the bacon into the whole pot, especially if you're going to be more informal. Now one other thing I think that I might add to this dish, just to perk it up a bit, just to give it a bit more garnish, is maybe some little julienne of crisp apples, just to provide a little sweetness to it. But other than that, I'm going to add some freshly cracked pepper to it and get ready to serve it. Well that's it, that's our smoky bacon, celeriac, and lentil soup. If you can get beyond the color of it and get into the flavor and the winter freshness of everything that's in this soup, this is a fantastic warming dish for a winter's night. I'm the Pod Chef. thanks for watching the show, take care of yourselves, and keep on cooking. Bye now.